Nation, it's the Gridiron, talking ACC, SEC, the Big Ten, and all the big games throughout the college football land. That's Dixie Football Nation, 830 Eastern, 730 Central, Saturday mornings on the Armchair Quarterback Show's YouTube channel, going live. Or catch the instant replay. Good morning. It's time to wake up, y'all. You're listening to the Armchair Quarterback Show. We're here weekdays on CBS Radio, YouTube Live, 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. The Armchair Quarterback Show, your first choice for Southern sports talk. Good morning, Mr. Justin Waller. Good morning. I don't know much, but I know one thing. Olympic mountain biking might be the hidden gem of the Summer Olympics this year. Okay. <laughs> I left you speechless. That's awesome. I, I, Check it I, out. I didn't expect that. I didn't want you to set your DVR right now, but go ahead, sir. <laughs> I am like me, and I don't know much, but I know one thing. I'm going to explain why we got a picture of A-Rod up on his boat over here, man. This is classic. You're listening to the Armchair Quarterbacks. Emergency preparedness drill. Oh, no, come on. You know how it works. Once a quarter, keep our readiness up. Now, rise and shine, sleepyhead. Half the town is probably dead. I have to get a lock from my door. <laughs> I think you'll like the drill tonight. I've tried to make it fun. Each of these cards contains a detailed scenario of a possible apocalyptic event. Uh, everything from wildfires to a surprise invasion by Canada. <laughs> Pick a catastrophe, any catastrophe. Sheldon, Canada is not going to invade California. Yeah, really? You think those hippies in Washington and Oregon can stop them? Armchair. Community access channel. He's the armchair quarterback. He's full of beer and he's full of snacks. Top of the morning to you. Welcome to the Armchair Quarterback Radio Show. A little batting practice getting us started with Justin Waller. Justin, how the hell are you this morning, sir? I'm doing good and obviously a little bit more excited about Olympic Mountain Biking King than uh, you are. I guess I haven't seen it. And so Pure I- carnage. NASCAR without motors going downhill. Great wrecks. Did you catch it this morning or was this last night or what? Um, uh through our subscriber that uh, we mutually share um, or have, not share, um, you can just record it and pull it at any time. You can actually go in there and search by events under the Tokyo Olympics, and uh, it's pretty nice. YouTube? Yes. Okay. I, I don't know if you meant that or, or something. Yeah, I didn't know if we were going to charge them for an ad or not, but, you know. Yeah. No, well, I mean, I mean, come on. It's YouTube, <laughs> and we're on YouTube. We're obviously not against YouTube. <laughs> so, I mean, everyone's got their... Yes, I rejoined uh, and uh, I'm back uh, after a small hiatus and uh, yeah, still I, the I, best streaming content. So I'll just wrap that commercial full circle. There you go. There you go. I, I, I searched and searched and could not find what we were looking for, some kind of promo code or something. I, I was like, man, I, I put it every kind of search engine. Basically, basically the answer was, yeah, right, buddy. Uh, <laughs> You're paying like, full price. You can't hook your friends up. Like, come on, bro. Can't one of us take a month off and then come back and we both get a deal? Uh, come on uh so the reason why a rod is right next to us right above you over my right shoulder check this story out so you know he he and j load have split up right that's that's been well documented and i guess uh ben affleck and her are, are back uh you know cuddles and all that kind of stuff which i was not aware of that until the story popped up that i guess they're back together and whatever uh but evidently this has been going on for a hot minute since they've broken up a rod is showing up everywhere j-lo is at if j-lo is in vacationing in the hamptons where she was earlier a rod pops up like right her his house almost like right next to hers right this picture where would you say this picture is taken at? Because he shows up. Because I hope he's looking at Ben play with her butt cheek on the picture we've seen circulating around. Well, um, well please that, tell me he's on the boat. I mean, did that happen? Did he go pure stalker on it? I don't think he's on their boat. I mean, unless he went, you know, Groucho Marx and put like something on, you know, ah, I'm, I'm here to be a handyman. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, I'm talking about in the world. 
because remember a rod works every sunday night but i don't believe they've been in the booth so i believe a lot of this stuff has been uh you know zoom like so weirdly enough espn still not putting their, their people in the booth because they're fully bought into uh i mean i mean good lord espn the, the, the election was eight months ago give it a rest right but anyways this picture was taken early this week i believe in france he's ju- he's followed her from new york to france just happened to be in the area hey baby <laughs> we got a full-blown stalker a guy who's got millions of dollars has no reason to chase after anybody right no matter what his preference is a rock can have pretty much whatever he wants because he's a rod and he's he's a multi-millionaire damn near billionaire baby um the one thing he can't do is become robin without batman <laughs> I guess, man. I, I mean, uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, unbelievable. So I just, I had to put that picture up. I heard this story today and I was like, you know, all this money that you have, all this money you have, and you, you would think you, you don't get married. Okay. Maybe you really cared about it, whatever, but you've got all this money. You would think you could find time and people to keep you uh entertained to not be chasing her i mean literally halfway around the world if this was just happened to be in new york i wouldn't even be like whatever man that they probably have the same area but he happened to be in france the same time she happened to be in france get the hell out of here with all that uh bad news today simone biles pulled out of the olympics evidently some kind of an injury that has not been disclosed yet so uh, that is the, uh, the, the bad news uh, going on today. But let me go ahead and uh, we'll dive into the first quarter of the armchair quarterbacks. Good news for NFL fans. Just it looks like Aaron Rodgers is going to be a Packer after all this year. Looks like they have figured out something. Do you see this thing where they're talking about it? Nothing's been announced as a finalization, but they're saying the concessions at the at the – Packers stadium could have something to do with it as well. Uh, dude, that is opening up a Pandora's box that owners don't want to open up, right? You get your money from butts in the seats and, and, and sodas and beers bought, right? How does that fall in with green Bay with them being, uh, the, the way that their ownership is. And I mean, the Got fans, it. I mean, how does that fall in? Do they even get to to have a say in that? Because, yeah, you're right. That is unique. What happens when Tom Brady says, well, you know what? I want beer sales. You can have the rest. Uh, you want me to play here? I'll play for $5 million, but you give me the beer sales. Yeah, what if five years from now uh, Patrick Mahomes says, you know what, dude? I want, I want ticket sales. I mean, what the hell is the point of even owning a team at this point? I feel like the NFL has got to step in and say you can't do this. You make your money in our salary cap, and that's it. You cannot make your money outside the salary cap, right? Because you're opening up a Pandora's box. of It's almost like college football-ish, like, right, where they're just bending rules to, to put money in people's pockets so they'll play for you. I know it's a different scale, but what I'm saying is you're already allotted X amount of money to play for a team, and that's supposed to be the salary cap, and that's supposed to be it. This isn't like you're being given uh, the ability – to have your own hot dog stand in in the in the stadium okay this is you're going to take a percentage of the of the concessions if that's accurate that's asinine i mean that is incredibly asinine and dumb dumb on the part of the packers who who i don't know i'm with you i don't know who the hell's uh (laughs) i i don't know who runs them because it's there's there's got to be one final thought right even though it's it's owned by a community you can't have we I mean, have someone have in, in our in our circle that uh has a share of the packers that uh we've joked about in the past i mean what happens here they is he gonna lose his beer sales does somebody have the? Uh, i can't remember who it was uh i i know that we have an individual that that has one now that you say that it rings a bell i just don't recall and i and I, I know it's between two and i don't want to throw names out and just be completely wrong but uh, we'll talk about it off air but yeah i mean where, where does that come down to and how does that fall um 
and then do the other. I, I would have controlling it owners Atlanta just Braves, get... a very, 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 very small percentage. But I, I bought a stock in them a while back just so I could say I was part of the Atlanta Braves. But... Hey, man, it happens. And I think this was a yeah. unique or a similar situation that occurred uh, during one of the sell offs or uh, at some point where you had an opportunity. And I think this individual just said, I am an official owner of the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I don't know. It's it's going to be a weird weird story going forward because uh, if the, if it happens, you know, the first thing that I thought of was, dude, NBA fan, NBA players are going to jump on this, especially when you have teams where there's like two or three guys. The main reason why they come out to see you, right? Like, let's just take the Brooklyn Nets for example. No one's going to go watch a Nets game if if Kevin Durant's not not on the team, right? Does he have a stake in, in their concessions? I mean, what are we talking about? Does he get concessions and Kyrie gets like, you know, uh, T-shirt sales and then maybe James Harden gets uh, parking? I mean, wh- well, it's just- I mean, I, I see that, but I, I guess my, my immediate first thought was, okay, when does this stop? When the first round of concessions go out and the second round of negotiations and now my $10 beer causes costs $15, at what point do folks just stop going to the game? So you, it's that Pandora's box you talk about. Once it spirals out of control and just say, okay, now you have 32 teams that are conceding concessions and everybody is putting in a portion. And then the next young, let's go back three years. Mahomes is entering the league. Whoever the next Mahomes is, is like, you know what? <laughs> I'm 10 times better than that guy. So now we have to raise concessions. So who, who goes and fills in for Matt Ryan with a fixed uh, concession slate. And, you know, that was the whole point that Arthur built the stadium is he wanted in seat attendance and he wanted affordable concessions. Well, now in the market, if you've got to offer up concessions, how do you continue to do that? May, you've got me because I really don't know. Man. I mean, I'm just, I'm sitting here. I mean, watching. now you're not going to go to the games because we can already see a better performance on Where TV. Gonna do what, what I know I do. I don't know if you do, but, you know, yes. Yeah, something- you, you know how we roll guess it's strapped to your leg and, and it's and it's not a weapon they don't have plastic detectors yet <laughs> exactly i still got that one that fits like comfortably it's it's a it's a boot cut uh uh plastic flask with the tennessee vol uh, logo on it that that wasn't made by accident can we <laughs> just quit making glass with metal lids uh shooters and, and pints while we're at it i mean it can, it, it's 2021 everybody knows what you're carrying them around you get the big bottle nobody buys pints unless you're taking it somewhere well i get the i get the i guess it's a little bigger than a pint not much but that but that's after pre-gaming <laughs> you know what i mean i yeah. i'm gonna let going in there it's not like i'm you know you know just you know pouring out my cup of joe as, a, as i'm heading to the stadium go, all right let's let's see what beer tastes like now nah, man i'm i mean i'm hitting it hard and, you know, it's four or five hours before you know what didn't you and i sit out in a freaking park a lot drinking going into uh what the hell game did we walk into i remember uh, we were on top two of, of them it was uh we were down there for the uh alabama florida state and then followed up the tennessee georgia tech game okay and i guess we did it uh, well the tennessee georgia tech game we pre-gamed at the at the braves game because yeah. The only people that ever do that, dude. We're gonna go ahead and go go to batting practice, drink some beers, and then we'll take a Uber over to the football game. Um, and then yeah, that was the one I'm thinking of was was the Florida State Alabama game. Uh, yeah, when we, we, we were out there in that, it was like a parking garage, and we we're you know, slamming her down. And we oh yeah, and we walked around the uh, the the compound, so to speak. I bet that place looks a lot different than than what it did when we were. Now that it's probably built up outside because there was nothing around it uh, at the time. And you know what else is different about that stadium right now as we speak? It's got a resident. Did you see this story? I, I Kanye did see West, that. Kanye West is living in that damn stadium. <laughs> He's squatted. He's a squatter. He had some kind of a, a record release. I, I, I guess they still call him record album release, whatever you want to call it uh friday ish i believe and he said he heard some things that he didn't like in the music so he's gonna continue to edit and it was supposed to come out either this past friday or this coming friday but now it's been pushed back until august 6th so he's living in in squalor in the in the uh, stadium if you had one stadium that you could live in 
and you've got to take into consideration all of what's going to go on in that stadium and what's around it. Is there one stadium that you would pick over others? I mean, that would probably be it, but I could see me winding up in, uh, in Dallas. I've never been in it and I'm not a huge Cowboys fan, but if I had to live in a stadium, I don't know that Jerry's world wouldn't be the one that I'm going to squat in. Even though Arthur's in the bad, bad second. LA has no interest to me. It would be the other one, it or Vegas, but uh, I have no desire to be in those cities. So I would be between Dallas and, uh, and Atlanta. I think, I think, I, I think my, my two choices would be Vegas and Nashville because uh, the Titan stadium. Uh, I wouldn't want to be at this predator stadium because there's, there's what 81 or 41 home games. And you got to deal with all the concerts that go on this, the football stadium. Isn't going to get used as much. Right. And also you're a very, very short Uber ride over the bridge to downtown Nashville where all the, you know, the partying is, I don't know Vegas as well, but I got to figure if I'm in the Vegas stadium and it's looked really badass that I'm really close to a casino. So I'm just going to assume that I'm assuming there's a casinos in there somewhere. So that's, I'm going to guess that. Uh, well, I hope you land that spot. Cause, uh, I'd be worried about you at Nissan permanent resident there. Um, Cause not only are you short Uber ride, you're short walk from danger. So, uh, you know, <laughs> turn the left out of the parking lot and it's not where you need to be. I'm, I'm not walking anywhere, man. If, if I've got enough money where I'm, where I'm squatting in, in a football stadium, then uh, I am definitely going to be uh, in armored vehicles, whether they're needed or not, just because it's cool to have been an armored vehicle. And uh, trust me, my friend, you'll have a suite in there somewhere. You, you'll be uh, uh, squatting with me because I'm not living in a stadium that size by myself. I'll go nuts, you know. No matter how big a stadium is, it's still not big enough for you and your wife to live in, right? <laughs> you you'll it. fill it up. I, I you guarantee. You gotta go down there, and I'm gonna go way the hell over here for at least five minutes. We can't be on top of each other the, the whole time. All right, let's get into Virginia Tech uh, football. Uh, they are going to be hitting this season, and look this 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 season here, Justin. For all intents and purposes, this is make or break for a Fuentes. I did not realize this was his sixth season. I don't know why, but I thought it was like his fourth-ish. This is his sixth season, and I saw a stat. Where, where is it at? Uh, the, the, the Fuentes, in his six years, has gone 38 and 26, which, which doesn't sound terrible, but has only had one 10-game winning season. And that's a program that was used to winning quite a bit. Before. Well, and he's had two under 500 seasons, which hasn't happened since, I think, the early 90s. I mean, that's not something that that program is accustomed to. They, they don't have sub-500 years, and he's unfortunately had two of them. Now, I don't know how much you put on last year and how much I think you get a pass on that, but the, the defense was just slam horrible. Oh, and I, I don't think – if they can't find a way to uh, sure that up, then uh, Mr. Fuentes will most likely have his uh, walking papers. You, you, you don't walk in behind Beamer and struggle on special teams and defense in consecutive years of embarrassment like you had last season. And then they got the transfer quarterback uh, from Oregon, uh, Braxton Burmeister or Burmeister. I don't, I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm going to assume it's Burmeister. They're expecting big things out of him. He's defi he definitely can't be worse at quarterback because every time I watch Virginia Tech play uh, Virginia Tech offense at quarterback last few years, they, I forget the kid's name, but he just left the – the terrible, I mean, it was a wide receiver playing quarterback. He couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, but still they scored like 31 points and averaged uh, 440 yards a game down the stretch. So even with that, you got to figure they got a fighting chance with this, with this Burmeister kid. Um, they've also got some kids coming back wide receiver Tavion Robinson and Trey Turner. Both are, we're, we're, they were averaging about 16 yards a catch a game last year. I figured that's going to have an uptick with a, a, tr a traditional real quote unquote, real uh, quarterback. And he's coming from Oregon. You got to figure that he can sling it. I'm pissed off. I mean, that quarterback you were putting down transferred to Tennessee. His name was hooker. And uh, I mean, you just derailed my thoughts. Thanks buddy. <laughs> I forgot. That's where he went. 
I mean, you're like, yeah, this guy sucks, and he's going to salvage your team's career. <laughs> if if it's the same kid I'm thinking if, of, man. If this was the Premier League, we would be getting ousted. I mean, let, let's just put it that way. Thank, <laughs> thanks for sealing our fate. I'll have to look and see at Tennessee's depth chart and make sure that that's the same uh, kid uh, because uh, – the one that I remember that was, I think that was his name. I think it was Hooker. Uh, he, he, he would come in and I was like, my God, can't, don't they have a, a punter they can throw better than this kid? He's a really good athlete. And maybe that's what he's transferred to Tennessee to be. Is, is he transferring there to be a, a quarterback? I mean, he, he's in the room right now, but uh, I mean, all odds are that Harrison Bailey comes out and wins that. I think that's the future for the program. If, uh, if the hypo system is going to go, but uh We'll see. Yeah, I mean, Hooker could probably transition out. He's an elite runner. So, uh, I mean, he, he gives you some flexibility to uh, for yards after the catch guy. All right, so as, as far as uh, the <laughs> – I didn't mean to rain on your brain. I did not know that that's where he, he transferred. Well, you peed all in I, my chair, buddy. Left. I mean, just straight wet him up I there, soggy. I thought he went out west, so I, I didn't even think that that – oh, man, that's funny. Um Let's go ahead and hit their their action. He's like, he didn't go far enough west, evidently. Uh, <laughs> he went a little west. You got to go far west. You know, Virginia Tech and, and Knoxville, that ain't, that ain't far west enough. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and, and get into their schedule real quick because uh, we're going to run out of time here. The First of all, number one with the bullet, man, they hit the ground running. This is a team that they're going to take on in North Carolina that hung, what, 56 on them last year? And they get that right out the gate. Who the hell decided this was a good idea? It's going to be on Friday, September 3rd, which is fun. And what sucks that I just realized uh, last night when I saw this, I was like, I'm going to be at the Grand Old Opry during this game. This sucks, man. I was really looking forward to the. I thought this was a Thursday night game. And then I realized they had it down to the last, I don't know, two months ago. They, they couldn't decide if they're going to do Thursday or Friday night. I assumed it was going to be Thursday. Because the Big Ten's got a really good Friday night game too, so there's some good football that that weekend um, or that Friday. They're going to take on North Carolina. It's in Blacksburg, but they're going to take on North Carolina. Who that is a rough one coming out the gate, and then they get Middle Tennessee State of all teams uh, to come in there. They go to West Virginia. That's going to be a rough out of conference game. Could be an in conference game by the time we get there. Uh, <laughs> Richmond. Be which, I mean, that's just laziness. I guess they're not wanting to, to drive very far for their out-of-conference game there. Uh, uh, is that Richmond College? Is that high school? Or what is that? Uh, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh at home, Syracuse at home. They got a lot of home games at Georgia Tech, at Boston College, and then they finish off at home against Duke and then at Miami and at Virginia, which is going to be huge for their season. <laughs> They are, they're over under right now out in Vegas is uh, seven and a half to eight. So, so somewhere in that, depending on which book you look at, where do you see Virginia tech at this year? Cause I think they're right on the cusp there, but it would not shock me if they're below that number. And I'm going to lean under, I just six of your first seven games are at home. And those include battles with North Carolina West or excuse me on the road at West Virginia. That's the one road game in that mix, but You've got Carolina, Notre Dame, and Pitt at home. Uh, that, that's going to be brutal. And then Syracuse the following week, and we, we don't really know where we're going to put that team in yet. But Pitt and Syracuse, I mean, you, you've got a tough schedule. Those could all three all be rough games. Um, man, I six and six, seven and five is what I've got. But uh, best case, uh, maybe they win out an eighth one, but I think that it's going to take a big upset in there somewhere. They've got to win one of the big ones. They'll have to pull off a Carolina or a Notre Dame to, to or, or an at Miami to carry that. And I don't know that they get one of them big three. And honestly, if that happens, I think Virginia Tech's looking for a new coach. Six and six, definitely. Seven and five, most likely. Uh, I don't see, unless uh, those five losses – are really close nail biters to these powers, but I think and they're twenty one point games. I mean, you can't let, uh, have a defense letting thirty two points be scored per game this year and blown out. I think that's completely going to be on the coach if uh, they're not in these games. If, they, like you say, they're not nail biters, but these need to be low scoring nail biters, or it's going to be walking papers. I think North Carolina beats them. Notre Dame probably beats them. 
we'll have to see what Notre Dame has, but I think I got to give Notre Dame the edge, even though it's in Blacksburg. Boston College is going to beat them in Boston. That quarterback, I'll say it again. Look out, y'all. He, he's going to be a very big uh, pro prospect uh, at Miami, at Virginia, uh, at West Virginia. That's six games, and then at home against Pittsburgh. That's seven games are going to. Uh, yeah, I just I think six and six, seven and five is best case scenario, which love Fuentes fired. I agree with you. What What is your walk off for the day, sir? Well, now that I won't distract people, let's get back to this Olympic Mountain Mine. Pure carnage. It's like NASCAR off road downhill the wrecks are amazing you must record it and get it set up hang on for one second before you dip out because this what what i said yesterday is is what i'm about to play for you about the uh, cleveland guardians because you got to see this it's it's pretty damn funny as as we head to break will do let me tell you something if the u.s government decides to stick a tracking device up your ass, you say thank you and God bless America. ACC football covered like no other here on the Armchair Quarterback. Against the blitz, touchdown for the state. Rock Preston scores the touchdown and now it's Bowden's decision and he sends Mowry onto the field right away. Danny Cannell is the holder. Maui turns it. This game is over. A 31-31 tie. A 31-31 tie. A deep throw by Lawrence. A lot of contact. Justin Ross broke free from it. He's down in the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. Justin Ross, a freshman wide receiver. Big, rangy. And Trevor Lawrence knows, throw it up against that single coverage, give him a chance to make a play on a 50-50 ball. If you're a fan of the ACC, pull up an armchair. You're home. Do you want to lose 18 pounds fast and improve your health? Now you can lose up to 18 pounds in your first two months with Nutrisystem. Get delicious breakfasts, lunches, dinners, even snacks and shakes delivered safely to your door. All delivered for free. It's easy to follow, and you'll see results in your first week. Just text BURN to 323232. You'll get your favorite foods made healthier and perfectly balanced to put your body in fat-burning mode. Text BURN to 323232 right now and get 50% off a month of meals and shakes. That's right, 50% off a month of meals and 50% off a month of shakes with probiotics to help support your immune system. Just text BURN to 323232 right now. There's even a money back guarantee. Millions of people have lost weight with Nutrisystem and you can too. Lose up to 18 pounds in your first two months. Just text BURN to 323232. That's B-U-R-N to 323232. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting rules for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. Hi, this is Britney Spears. It's what up, what up, this Jay-Z. This is Jennifer Lopez. I'm chair. <laughs> This portion of the show is being brought to you by Ed's Almost Good Beer. Remember, Ed's Almost Good Beer was brewed in God's country when God wasn't looking. Kick off fall and kick off happiness with Shopper Hopper Grapefruit and Pomegranate Beer. Log on to kickoffhappiness.com for your chance to win a cool custom cooler with Shopper Hopper swag, including your favorite team's jersey. Look for the Shopper Hopper displays at your local retailers for great savings on Shopper Hopper Grapefruit and Pomegranate. And learn more about the sweepstakes at kickoffhappiness.com. See site for official rules. Must be 21 or older. Brewed and bottled in Germany. Imported by Radeberger Group USA, Norwalk, Connecticut. Always enjoy responsibly. CBS Sports Radio. Although edited, tonight's thriller contains suspense and violence, which may be unsuitable. Parental discretion is advised. let you in the room before we went to break i guess i misclicked or lost <laughs> yeah no worries i was saying it was getting kind of close i was like oh, i don't know if we'll make it i just assumed Over i, I clicked it and then i clicked the the thing that we do when we go to break so that
they're not just sitting there sitting there watching us scratch our ass. Uh, <laughs> I I thought I, I thought I saw it accepting. I don't know if it lost it or something. How are you this morning, mm-hmm. sir? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I hated to see the the, you know, the news that uh, uh, oh what, her name's escaping my mind. Uh, Simone uh, Biles. Biles is yeah is going to be missing the uh, the rest of the Olympics. Uh, get injured and mm-hmm. uh, let's go ahead and get into what's happening. By the way, because uh, got a few things to hit up with on this, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that right now. If it'll play. There we go. Uh, what's happening in the world of sports? Real quick, we'll dive into it. If you want to hear more about this, uh, check out the uh, uh, "Take Me Out to the Ball Game," which which is uh, dropping at the do- at the bottom of the hour as this show is ending at nine thirty. Uh, Ten complaints filed against Watson. Now they're saying that ten police co- uh, complaints were filed, mm-hmm. not just twenty two. So, ten of the twenty-two women that have tr- went after him for civil suits evidently had complete uh, mm-hmm. police complaints filed for him. So that's an eye opener. Actually, I think um, I believe it was eight of the original twenty-two, and then two new ones who right. filed criminal right. complaints. Well, well, two that, that mm-hmm. are not going to, uh, or or have yet to file civil suits. Not saying they're not mm-hmm. going to, but but yeah. two of them had not filed a civil civil suit according Mm -hmm. now that's according to their attorney so uh to that's according to watson's attorney uh oklahoma state president she rips oklahoma and texas for their dirty dealings leaving the big 12 i think she probably has a point she's basically saying if you think that this started just a few weeks ago and all of a sudden here we are she believes this has been going on for months so basically it's it's against the the, uh, bylaws of of the big 12 and the grizzlies they make a big trade yesterday they they had uh adams and bledsoe and flip-flop picks with new orleans pelicans uh and aaron Rodgers is expected to hit green bay camp i would think sometime this week he's still out in california but it looks like they are getting uh decides to agree for him to play this year uh what say you on that nba trade by the way i'm not really a fan of uh what the what the grizzlies were doing i believe they plan on moving blood so anyways whether that's buying him out or trading him somewhere else um but i don't like to trade i like valentunas i think he's one of the he, he's an above average center. I think he's better than Steven Adams. And I think the two contracts they're getting back and Steven Adams and uh, Drew Blair and um, Bledsoe are just not good enough to only move up seven picks. Well, I think the other thing was, is, is that they were uh, going up seven spaces as well in this, this year's draft. Mm-hmm. I will say this for Adams. If they don't want him, they can trade him because mm-hmm. Steven Adams is a beast and Steven Adams does the dirty work that nobody else wants to do. And Steven Adams, what Steven Adams needs to do, he needs to be on a contender because that's that's the kind of mentality. He's a winner. He's got that winning mentality. Uh, but I get what you're saying as far as the overall New Orleans might have gotten the, the better player in the trade long term. I get that because, I mean, that kid they made the trade for, he averaged, what, 17 uh, points last year? I think so, it was 17 and 13. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's definitely a very, very talented kid that they can build around with Zion Williamson. I think it was a good trade on both sides. I'll be interested to see if they do keep blood. So if they do keep Adams or if they're just trying mm-hmm. to move, move them and they were uh, willing to accept it and then, uh, just move because evidently they've got their eye on somebody right Mm -hmm. um yeah the nba draft is what in two nights Mm -hmm. and what are you looking at for this year's nba draft well i I think for one we all know who's going number one Cade cunningham out of oklahoma state um he's kind of the star of this draft he'll be going number one to the pistons assuming there's no trade-ups um but right now, I think Detroit's going to hold still and um, take what they got with Cunningham. And then another guy I like in this draft is Evan Mobley. 
He, I think he's the second best player in this draft. Um, he's a center of USC. He's a great defender. I think he'll be good in the league. Uh, what I'm, I'm intrigued about Scotty Barnes. Obviously, him playing at Florida State's got my eye. Mm-hmm. They've got him going number three to the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. And uh, I swear, man, every time you swallow something on this show, it sound, you sound like a frog. Like, <laughs> you, got the loudest, I know it'd pick up my you got the loudest swallow on the planet. We're going to have to get you a straw or something. <laughs> might look I'll, Yeah, I'll, I'll grab a straw next time around. I didn't know it'd pick oh, up. Go. <laughs> I keep meaning to say something without saying something. I'm like, I can't, I can't ignore this. No, <laughs> you're good. I'm glad you let me know. <laughs> but, but with Scotty Barnes, I, I'm going to say this again. I watched him all year long playing. Or mm-hmm. say he's so raw. The kid, I'm not saying he's not going to be good in the NBA. So don't mis, mis- mistake what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's ready for the NBA. So if you draft him with the third pick overall, man, you better be prepared for him to have a big time three to four years before he's really ready to perform on a high level in the NBA. And to me, that's concerning if, if, you, if you're choosing the number eight overall pick. Because about the time he starts to get to go, man, I'm glad we got, glad we got him, he's going to be a free agent. He's- well, I, I think it comes down to the team that drafts him. If he goes to a team like, you know, if he goes to Cleveland or if he goes to um, Orlando maybe or even Oklahoma City if he falls that far, I, I think those would be good situations for him because those are teams that are currently rebuilding right now, especially the Thunder with how many picks they've kind of, they have in their arsenal um i think going to a team that is rebuilding and that plans on you know playing the long road and and you know trusting this process i guess in a sense i think that'd be a good situation for him just not forcing him into a a role too early yeah and granted all the teams with the top picks are are none none of these teams are going to be contenders anytime so you don't have like a random why do the lakers have the second pick type of year right uh but I'm looking at, I I just don't know if OKC is, is his best place to land. I honestly think Orlando might be the best place for land. First of all, if somehow he can fall that far, he would be an instant draw for fans in, in Orlando because Orlando is a pretty heavy Florida State town, okay? So th- just from a marketing standpoint, Orlando would love to get another. I don't think they're going to trade up for him because they've got two picks in the top eight, and they're looking at, building something and not mortgaging their future just to move up a couple of players. But Jalen green uh, to me is an interesting pick. Um, Haven't seen a, haven't seen him much. Haven't seen him. I've only seen some videos of him obviously because he did not uh, play in college as far as I know. Right. Wasn't he one of the guys that, that didn't play college? Uh, Yeah. He uh, with some other prospects, he formed a G league team. I right believe. right so evan Mos- mobley we remember him being very dominant at usc he 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 to me he's very interesting and a couple of the other guys that are they're ranked high that i've not seen well so i'm gonna move move past him but i have seen moses moody from from arkansas he was pretty now cbs has him going to orlando at the number i guess that's eighth pick overall mm-hmm. So they've got Orlando going Suggs from Gonzaga, which everybody remembers him, and mm. uh, Moody from Arkansas. And then you, this guy I think might be a reach because I think he was a really good college player. I think he's going to be a solid NBA player. But the number nine over pick, the Sacramento Kings, grabbing, grabbing Franz Wagner from Michigan. Did you watch him play? I did a bit. Yeah, I did him in Michigan. I just, man, he looks like mm-hmm. one of those guys that's not going to, uh, I guess he's going to stink in the NBA, but I think he's going to be very uh, pedestrian. Mm-hmm. I would be okay. very, I, I get that he's 6'9", he's a shooter. He never seemed very fast to me, and that always concerns me. Whenever you see a guy who's kind of a lumbering kind of guy in college, and you'll see them do well, I'm trying to think of someone that you may know because – my go all my thoughts go back well i mean i'm thinking like wally zerbiak is who he kind of reminds <laughs> me of where he was good he was damn good 
in college. He got in the NBA and that half step that you don't have makes a big mm -hmm. difference. So that yeah. was a little concerning to me that Sacramento would go all in on him. I, I, I have my doubts that the, the Wagner goes, uh, top 10. If he does, all you're going to get on ESPN for the next three weeks is it's, they got white privilege. That's why they drafted <laughs> him. He never should have been drafted. <laughs> They'll go the exact opposite. I'm saying, I'm saying he should be a little farther down. They're going to say that he should never been drafted, should never been allowed to play, but the uh, sport of basketball. Um, any other guys that, that that might be deeper in the draft that, that you have? Well, I mean, first of all, where where do your boys draft at? Do they have a first? No, round the Blazers. Pick? No, we don't have a first round pick. We gave that up in the Robert Covington trade last off season. Yeah, that's what so. I thought. So, you you literally have no interest in in this draft, huh? I'll pay attention to it just because just to see where guys fall, but for the Blazers, not particularly though. No. I'm interested to see where Keon Johnson goes. Mm -hmm. Got him projected. Uh, he, he was the Tennessee star, uh, played really well at the beginning of the season. Uh, they got him projected 24th overall to the Rockets, but we'll see where that goes. But anyways, we, we can move on from that. Just wanted to get kind of a feel for that. Uh, NBA free agency. Will you be watching the draft once Damian Lillard gets traded to the Knicks and you get some of the Knicks <laughs> draft picks? If we, I don't know what the Knicks can package together. Maybe RJ Barrett and some other guys. That's, and that's what I saw. Picks, but yeah, I saw RJ Barrett and a couple other pieces and draft picks mm -hmm. for uh, Lillard. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think we'll. I don't think we'll see Dame get moved before the draft. I think there'd be a lot more going into it than that. I think if he gets moved, I think I think this season, I think it's kind of a make or break year for his future with the with the Blazers. I think if we have a successful year after kind of rebuilding the team around him, I think maybe he'll want to stay. But if we don't make much change and we're a first round exit again, I think he'll then bounce. The uh when I saw that trade, RJ Barrett for Damian Lillard, all I thought was, is that all they're going to get? I don't know if I'd make that trade. Yeah. Like, There'd it, probably be a better package out there. I I felt like that the guy that was making this trade offer, I, I forget where I even saw it yesterday, but I felt like at the time I was like, is this guy just a, a Knicks fan? Like, like, what are we looking at here? I just feel like that if you're going to have R.J. Barrett involved, there's going to have to be a little bit more if I'm going to give you Damian Lillard and the rest of the package – that the guy put together was uh very very uh pedestrian at best so um anyways moving on from that uh the free agents market is going to be hitting um in the nba what is that i think they said august 6th is the no august 2nd august 2nd monday monday um do you see any big like any big shakers and movers in this because this doesn't seem like one of the NBA free agencies where there's just a bunch of buzz because guys like LeBron and company or whatnot are already settled into where they're going to play next year. Mm -hmm. I think the big guy that I'm looking at is uh, Kawhi Leonard, and it comes down to whether or not he uh, chooses to opt into his player option. Um, I think if he opts out and signs somewhere else in free agency, obviously it will make that team instantly a contender, and it will also probably force the Clippers to blow it up and trade Paul George. So I think – the decision that lies in front of Kawhi Leonard, I think it's going to have huge implications on what happens next year. Yeah, I well, Kawhi Leonard, I don't think he's going anywhere because he's mm -hmm. torn ACL. Who the hell wants him, right? Yeah. So I figure he's just going to – I'd play. want Kawhi. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'll take I, him on. He's not going to play. He'll play. When? It was a part. It was a partially torn ACL. He'll, he'll recover probably about – before he'll recover by around playoff time. I promise you. If he doesn't play in next year's playoff, partially, I will be shocked. Partially torn ACL. That's better than a full. That's like saying it's like saying they only blew off one of your ears in the one <laughs> fight. It's like, dude, I still got I still got shot in the head. The hell are you talking well, it's better about? Better being completely deaf, I guess. He did it in what June? So uh, yes, best case scenario, he comes back like around February or March. I'm not signing a guy mm -hmm. like that because if he gets it, if he has the typical, these NBA players typically do not heal as fast as other athletes. I don't know what the reasoning is, but it's probably got to do with the sport that they play, the constant running on the leg. Uh, 
I mean, he could be another Clay Thompson where you don't see him for two years. I think if he's smart, he just sticks it out. Rehabs keeps assuming that he feels good about his doctor situation, which I would think he would being from San Diego, that he's got a good doctor in, in Los Angeles. And if it were me, if I were him, I would opt in. I would stay an extra year unless I'm trying to pressure the Clippers into giving me a, a, a longer deal, which the Clippers might do that. But if I were him and I wanted to get out of there and I would just rehab the hell out of it, get ready. And I probably wouldn't even play next year. I'd probably sit there and go, you know what? If I'm hundred percent, maybe, but other than that, I'm lying free agency next year because PG 13 playoff P is not the answer. And I don't want to be stuck here with him. Or you, you better get rid of uh, playoff P because this formula, this formula has not worked. It has not worked mm-hmm. at all. Um, yeah. All right. Moving on from that, the Washington football team, that is the team that we are looking at today. And of course the big news yesterday was that Jonathan Allen signed a, a four year extension, $72 million mm-hmm. extension, which is, which is huge for them. I mean, he is pretty much, you know, the anchor of, of that, of that defensive line in the middle. And then you've got mm-hmm. sweat and young on the outside. I mean, that defensive <laughs> line is just brutal. I mean, yeah. you're just going to get, I really like this team this year, by the way. And the, I did too. And the draft, that the, they had, I thought was solid. You added Davis, you added, uh, St. Juiced, the uh, mm-hmm. defensive back from, uh, Minnesota. I really liked that. And I actually thought that, that Sam Cosme, I think that's how we pronounce the I mean, maybe it's Cosme, but Sam, uh, Samuel Cosme, the tackle from Texas. I thought mm-hmm. that was a steal because when we were doing our, our, uh, our draft boards, our mock drafts, most of, most of them had, caused me like a late first round and they ended up getting him late second round. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a hell of a deal. And then they bring in Ryan Fitzpatrick. They bring in Curtis Samuels for a three year, 45 deal. So I think a lot of people, I think that's kind of gone under the radar. I was doing a fantasy, uh, fantasy mock draft the other day. One of my Mm -hmm. first ones, I saw Samuel and I was like, Oh, that's right. He went to Washington. I guess in my head, like he's Mm -hmm. still Panther. Right. Um, and then, I think something that's went under the radar that's going to be bigger than the most is William Jackson, the three year 42 deal that he signed coming from Cincinnati. That defense just got better. Mm-hmm. Now they signed Adam Humphreys and Lamar Miller. That ain't helping anybody do anything, but uh, mm-hmm. Ryan Fitzpatrick to me is going to make that offense go. That defense mm-hmm. is going to be elite. This team to me, um, I'll hit their schedule real quick, but what it, I think I think they've got a really good chance of winning this division. I, I think not only do they have a good chance, I I have them winning the division right now. Um, I think that defense is just wiped out. Is it, young Squire? Because mm-hmm. because we're gonna be making predictions on divisions later uh, in the summer. So, oh, okay. So, so you so you don't want to quite put them there because you're gonna say, well, I yeah, got them there, but we'll see how <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see what my final thoughts are. Because the problem is you don't want to paint yeah. yourself in the corner. Because what if okay. uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick goes out there and uh, tears this Kawhi Leonard? What, what, what you know in the, in practice the first week? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, that is true. It's it's all about the illusion. All right. Yeah, anyway. we'll wait and see what's up with Fitzpatrick. Um, no, I do like the I do like Washington this year. Um, I like Fitzpatrick. I think he had the Dolphins uh, set to make the playoffs last year before he was benched. Um, I like the addition of Curtis Samuel a lot. Um, him and Terry McLaurin, they played in college together. I think they'll be great in the league as well. And then that defense, like you said, adding William Jackson got a lot better. And I think that this team has a good future. And really, Taylor Henneke looked pretty good as well. So mm-hmm. I'm assuming it's Ryan Fitzpatrick. But it's it's not definite. I mean, t- you know, Taylor Henneke could take the reins over at some point. I thought he looked really good in the in the playoff game against Tampa. Uh, Kyle Allen just continued to do Kyle Allen things. I think he can be a solid backup in the league for years. I just don't know if he's ever going to be that next step starter. Uh, mm-hmm. Real quick on their on their season uh, in whole, you you start off with the Chargers and the Giants at home, and then you're at the Bills and at the Falcons. Where do you have them after those two? I have them going three and one in that stretch. I think they'll lose to the Bills, and I think they'll beat the other three. Okay. Uh, and then at home against the Saints, 
home against the Chiefs at Packers at Broncos. I think they'll go two and two in that stretch, assuming Rodgers comes back now. Um, I think that's pretty much set in stone. So I'll have the Packers winning that game, and I think they'll lose to the Chiefs as well. This is a tough stretch, by the way, because they're going to, mm-hmm. f- from a broader uh, uh, scope of that, you're, you're going to go at Bills, at Falcons, and then the four games I just mentioned, mm-hmm. and then it's going to be bookend by Buccaneers <laughs> at the Panthers, Seattle at home, and then at the Raiders. They've kind of got a brutal think, schedule, but I don't think a big yeah, I don't think a big number ha- has to win your division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think they'll go three and one in that stretch that you just mentioned with that loss coming to the Bucks. Um, I think I think the Seahawks defense getting after Russell Wilson or the sorry the the Washington football team defense getting after Russell Wilson will be a factor in the Seahawks game. And I think they'll come out on top of that one. You, you never have to apologize for calling them the Redskins because until they come up with another <laughs> nickname, I can't. <laughs> yeah, it's hard I mean, to speak, spell or uh, pronounce the Washington this football team yeah. every time you want to. Yeah, this isn't English Premier League soccer. I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't just call them the football club. Whatever. I mean, come on, come up with them on. Washington FD. Right. Uh, so then that goes. So to finish off, it's home against the Cowboys at the Eagles at the Cowboys at home against Eagles. So, for, so this is the interesting part. In four mm-hmm. weeks, they're going to play the Cowboys and Eagles home and away, back to back to back to back to back, which is really weird. And then finish it all off at the Giants. Somebody screwed up when they were making the schedule and crammed all the division games in at the end. They had five yeah. division games to end this. That is really strange. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, with that yeah. being said, where do you have your your Super Bowl champion uh, Washington football team <laughs> if you proclaim them? <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll finish around 10 and uh, 10 and seven this year, maybe 11 and six. Um, I, I really like this team. Like I said, I love their defense. I think that's going to be causing a lot of teams trouble. And I, I think that'll be a dominant force in a lot of games. And I think they'll win. Yeah. I've got them somewhere around 11 and six, 10 and seven. I even mm-hmm. nine and eight might win this division. I mean, they're just yeah. the only real contender I see against them would be the Dallas Cowboys. And that, but a lot of a lot of questions have to get answered with Dallas. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly, how good is that defense going to play? Because I believe Dak will be okay. You know, he's a young guy; he's coming back off that injury, but he's it's a long time ago since he since he hit that injured list. Their biggest, I think, that's their biggest concern. I really believe that Philly's in for kind of a rough year because mm-hmm. unless Jalen Hurts is miles above what we saw at the end of last year that defense is not good enough to shut anything down. So they're going to be in some shootouts and hurts. You're going to rely on hurts to constantly out duel guys in their division, like Fitzpatrick and like uh, Dak Prescott. That's a big mm-hmm. ask. And I just think the giants are going nowhere this year. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I, I like, I like the giants. I like Daniel Jones, but it feels like something's missing with Daniel Jones. I think he's an okay quarterback. But I don't know if he is ever going to hit that elite level. We'll we'll see this year, but uh, he's uh, definitely got a lot to uh, to work on. All right, let's go ahead and uh, hit the uh, turn back time and uh, birthdays and our walk offs. All right, on this date in 1988, long before you were ever thought of. Tommy John becomes the first pitcher to commit three errors on one play when he bobbles Jeffrey Leonard's grounder and then reco- and then to recover throws the ball down the right field line that Dave Winfield retrieves and fires home when the Yankees left-hander cuts it off, re- relaying the throw wildly to home plate. Three errors in one game by the great Tommy John. And, of course, that is the same Tommy John that, that the surgery was named after. He had had the surgery mm-hmm. years before that. He was 45 years old at this point. Uh, but he, he he was the first one to have the surgery that is obviously famously named after him, Tommy John surgery. Birthdays. And, of course, what made that different was that they took a ligament out of his leg to put it in his arm. It was the first time they ever tried it successfully. Mm-hmm. 
You know how scared you had to have been through Tommy yeah, Chong? Man, for the first you time. What? Since the 19th. You're going to do what? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, well, take well, a lot of convincing. I, I, you, you guys know what the hell you're doing? <laughs> We really don't. That's why we're going to try it on you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why they called it Sandy Koufax uh, <laughs> surgery. Because Sandy Koufax is like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. It's your birthday today. What does All right. I Birthdays. I Start off with a dead guy. This is one of the most famous of all of baseball, uh, New York baseball lore. Leo DeRocher. Ever heard of him? I recognize the name, I believe. Major League Baseball All-Star. Mm -hmm. In uh, 36, 38, and 40, he won the World Series with the Yankees in 28 and 34, later became manager of the World Series New York Baseball Giants. He was the famous uh, uh, manager of the Giants when the shot was heard around the world, the Giants win the pennant, the Giants win the pennant. He was born on this date, 1906, so... Uh, Actually, had a pretty long run, man. We managed to 91, so he's 85 years old when he passed away. Uh, let's go ahead and grab someone who who can uh, who can actually ce celebrate their birthday, we believe. At last check. Well, look at whose birthday it is. It all comes full circle from, from the beginning. A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, is 46 <laughs> years old today, and he's still – Heartbroken, chasing J. Lou halfway around the world. Here's your walk off for the day, sir. I don't talk about baseball too much, but the Yankees and Rays play tonight at seven ten Eastern time. Um, I'm not too sure how that's going to go. Yankees are fifty one and forty seven. Rays are sixty and forty. Um, I know the Rays recently traded for Nelson Cruz, so it'll be cool to watch him. I suppose. Are you? Uh, do you have a baseball team that you pull for? Is it the Yankees or is it the Rays? I pull for the Rays. I was born in Tampa, so and I've been to okay. a few games, so I tend to pull okay. for them. So now it all mm -hmm. comes full circle while, while you have your terrible taste in the college football team. <laughs> but at least you have a good taste in baseball team. Tampa there we Bay. go. Uh, that should be a, a pretty good series. I think Tampa's definitely headed to the playoffs. They just have to chase mm -hmm. down the uh, the Red Sox to win the division because you don't want to be in that in that wild card game. But that move mm -hmm. for, for uh, Nelson for Cruz. The Rays, Nelson Cruz. That was a sneaky good move that I think is going to mm -hmm. happen. I don't think the Rays are done. I think the Rays are going to make a couple of moves to help bolster. They need some innings eaters across these next couple of months. They don't want to keep just draining their uh, their bullpen. Mm -hmm. So uh, that game, I, one of those games is on national TV. It might be tonight's game. I can't remember. This one's on MLB Network. It is on MLB Network tonight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, big big six game stretch for, uh, for your Rays. They're they're at home against the Yankees uh, for three, and then this weekend mm. they're at home against the Red Sox. Mm. Uh, my walk off for the day is well, Braves Mets. We didn't get a chance to talk about it much, but uh, they split this. They split the doubleheader yesterday. It's okay. It's not terrible. I'll take it. Uh, but once again, what the hell is going on with the management of that team? In double headers, they can't score. They cannot score. They gave up one earned run in a double header yesterday, 14 innings, and, and only split the day. You should have swept the double header. And the second game that they lost was against the Mets bullpen. It wasn't even against it like DeGrom or something. It's against the Mets bullpen. It's asinine and embarrassing. But Morton's on the hill. They got three more games with the Mets before the trading deadline. And I do sincerely believe that the Braves need to win two of those three for them to be aggressive on Friday before the deadline. If they lose two or three, or God forbid get swept, it's a wrap. They're just going to try to win with what they got and see and see if the Mets can collapse. We'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday with Sean. And uh, we got a couple of fun uh, football teams that we, we're going to go over. And then, of course, it gets us one day closer to Thursday with Joey, NBA Draft Day, and we'll get into that. Great job, sir. And uh, thank you. We will see you on the flip side. Uh, and now, and now you can make now you can take a drink as loud as you want. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Have right, a good one. Yes, sir. Do, 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 do. Goodbye, sweetheart. Where it's time to go. Do, 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 do.
to do. We're back right tomorrow with another show. Well, Ooh. unless we're fired, we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Goodbye. Guys and gals, it's time to go. We'll see you on the next show. Same back time, same back channel. Thanks for listening to the Armchair Quarterbacks on these CBS Sports affiliates and catching the show on YouTube Live. We're here weekdays. Find Armchair Quarterbacks on YouTube Live today. Please subscribe and share and take us everywhere you go. The Armchair Quarterbacks, your first choice for Southern Sports Talk live from the First Coast. Get again.